Welcome back, everyone, to the Bank Customer Experience Summit podcast, the official podcast of the Bank Customer Experience Summit. My name is Bradley Cooper. I'm the content director of the Bank Customer Experience Summit. And today I'm joined by two very important guests. I'm joined by Levi Daly, the Chief Technology Officer at Cook Solutions Group, and Michael Strange, the Director of Technology Services at Cook Solutions Group. And we're here to talk about the topic of ATM fraud, a topic that is very important, obviously, to our readers at ATM Marketplace. So thank you for joining us today, Levi and Michael. Thank you. We're really excited to be here. Excellent. So just to get started, can you tell our listeners a little bit about Cook Solutions Group? What is What are they all about? Yeah, sure. So I'll, I'll give a little history lesson on CSG. Uh, we started in 2002 um, as Cook Security Group, selling um, physical, and secure, physical and electronic security um, software and hardware to financial institutions. So we've really grown up in the space of banks and credit unions and FIs. Um, a few years later, we uh, got into the ATM space, selling uh, WinCore and then selling NCR ATMs, and we're still an NCR reseller today. Um, but when we got into the NCR space um, and the ATM space in around 2006, 2007, uh, we immediately jumped into developing our own managed services line. So we today we call that Remote View, um, where we can manage and maintain these um, machines remotely before we send a technician. So Michael Strange um, on the call oversees our entire managed services today that we've continued to grow. Um, one of the things unique about us is that our CEO said, hey, this is a very beneficial platform that we've created. So let's um, offer this to other uh, companies just like Cook Solutions Group or Cook Security Group at the time across the nation. So we have a VAR network of over 21 other ATM resellers that service uh, that sell and service ATMs that market um, our managed services. They might white label it at their own, but they sell that to their customers as well. So our experience in the ATM space is pretty expansive, um, you know, as we cover the entire United States with our managed services. So then in 2020, we did a rebrand to Cook Solutions Group. And that's just because we've continued to grow. We've continued to develop and release our own software, our own video surveillance platform, along with our managed services for ATMs. Um, and so we did a rebrand to Cook Solutions Group as we do provide um, solutions to our customers and not just security anymore. So... Excellent. Yeah, that's a great overview. Thank you so much for that, Levi. So um, we've heard a lot about ATM security issues, particularly in, in forms of people stealing the machine itself. But can you tell us a little bit about what ATM fraud is and why it's such a growing concern in this industry? Yeah, uh, ATM fraud is tampering with an ATM to obtain sensitive information like a account number or the PIN for sure. a card. Uh, as well as accessing the cash directly through some sort of means, whether it be jackpotting or um, tampering with the device directly. Excellent. And what are some of the most common methods that criminals use to commit ATM fraud? Because obviously you mentioned like jackpotting, which is a very big concern in the industry. Right. So the, the physical attacks, which are kind of the older style of fraud that we would see on ATMs, involved uh, attacking the individual components of the machine. So you would drill a hole into the into the ATM and tap into the control cables, right? Steal the account number from the cable connected to the card reader. So siphoning the data directly from the devices. Um, you'd also see some card reader overlays where bad actors would make an exact replica of either the card reader or the entire ATM fascia, slip it over the machine, and their, their skimmer device would be an inside that overlay. So they'd be able to capture your card data. Um, with any kind of skimmer, there's almost always a camera included. So mm -hmm. a separate piece of, of equipment, hiding a camera usually behind the advert light or one of your network bug stickers, and they use that, uh, that camera to capture your pin for that card. The newer attacks that we're seeing, they've really moved away from that overlay style of, of fraud, especially with the skimmers. Mm -hmm. uh, and now they're using a thing called a deep insert skimmer, where okay. instead of putting this device on the outside of the machine, they put it inside the card reader itself. So it's a very thin, very small component that goes inside the, the card reader. It houses the magnetic reader and it reads that information off of the magnetic stripe on the card. Then still on the outside fascia, they have to attach a camera somewhere. 
Sometimes it will just be a piece of gray plastic uh, that looks like the fascia of the machine. Sometimes mm-hmm. it'll be the, the network bug sticker that, you know, Visa, MasterCard, that sort of thing. Um, advert light is another uh, common one that we see where they'll they'll mimic the the light that goes above the keypad, above the screen of the ATM and hide a camera in one of the bolt holes. Um, and that camera, again, is used to capture the pin as you type that in uh, at the ATM. So the the deep inserts really get around most of the protections that come included from the ATM manufacturers. Sure. Because the, all the readers and everything are still looking for that overlay style. Once you put something inside the machine, of course, there's electronic components in there. How do you differentiate between the card reader and the bad guy's device? Uh, it's it's very difficult to do. Um, so those those skimmers are very effective virtually invisible to the to the ATM user uh, and and difficult to see without disassembling the components of the ATM. So deep insert skimmers are are really what we see the most often in the field. Uh, we're also starting to hear about shimmers, which mm. is the exact same thing, but it's tapping into the EMV chip on the card, not the mag stripe, but the same mm. basic deployment tactics. Excellent. Yeah, it sounds like they're definitely developing new ways. And as you mentioned, sort of that older way of thinking of thinking of that really big overlay is preventing banks from being able to do something about that. So with that being said, what steps can financial institutions take to address these newer forms of ATM fraud? Yeah, and and just real quick to to touch on some other types of fraud. I get a little nerdy excited about the deep insert oh, no skimmers. Problem. That's and, fun. <laughs> <laughs> and and so when you do the the skimming or the shimming attacks. You're, you're doing that for one of two reasons, to either resell that card information, right? Resell those, mm-hmm. those card numbers, the account info, or more immediately do a cash harvesting attack. So you take that account number and that pin that you just skimmed, you make your own magnetic stripe card, and you return to that same ATM, put that card in and start taking a, taking money directly out of that customer's account, directly mm-hmm. out of someone's bank account. Um, and that can have an immediate impact. And, and we'll see bad actors with a stack of 100 cards just doing one transaction after the other as quickly as they can. Uh, and they can drain the ATM of all of its cash in a single attack. Uh, with that with that cash harvested um, information. I'm sorry, with that skimmer harvested information. So skimming and cash harvesting are kind of two sides to the same coin sure. um, from a fraud perspective. We've seen a, a huge increase in man in the middle attacks mm-hmm. and sort of similar to skimming, but it's it's more of a physical network attack. So the bad actors will tap directly into the ethernet cable on the ATM and spoof the approval response from the ATM host network. So Mm. I put a random card in, it doesn't need to be valid, Um, type in a pin number, it sends the request to do a withdrawal to the host, but my my bad actor computer intercepts that communication and then sends a fake response saying, hey, this transaction's authorized, go ahead and dispense the cash. Mm. So it's kind it's kind of like cash harvesting, but I don't need a hundred cards. I use one card and just do transactions over and over and over again. And it's not actually taking money from someone's account. I'm mm-hmm. tricking the ATM to authorize the release of cash from the dispenser. So it's it's more in tune with jackpotting. Mm-hmm. It's just using an actual ATM card um, to to start that transaction. And again, they're they're mimicking the approval message coming from the ATM host. Um, right. So, and and we've seen a huge increase in 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 these just recently, and not just in our our local footprint, but across the nation with these man in the middle attacks. Mm-hmm. So, in what ways do you think that banks can protect themselves from these new forms of attacks? There's there's multiple ways to protect from these and and the best advice is always a layered approach. There there right. isn't a silver Certainly. bullet. Yeah, not one thing that's going to protect oh, you from absolutely. everything. So you you want an ATM, you want to have an alarm on your ATM. You want to protect that physical device. Um, the man in the middle attacks almost always involve opening the the hood to the ATM. Um, if you're talking about any kind of malware, right, just the inserting malware on the device, you got to get to the PC core inside the top hat. So having an alarm point on your top hat is is 
one of the better layered approaches. Sure. Making making sure your cache safe has all of the available alarm options. Um, with those older attacks where they drill into the cache safe, your your vibe sensor, your seismic sensor that detects the vibration of those kinds of physical attacks, which also has benefits for things like hook and chain. Um, mm -hmm. If you've got that seismic sensor um, really dialed in. So just having appropriate alarm protection on your ATM good surveillance coverage. We see a lot of financial institutions make the mistake of only using the transactional camera, you know, the, the face camera yes. that catches oh, the user. Absolutely. Right. You need to have that good overhead camera view where you can see the entire space um, and, and really be able to capture. And then someone monitoring that surveillance, right? Looking to see if someone is doing a transaction or not. Um, having a solid anti-malware suite in case they do that kind of cyber attack on the PC core and inject some malware. So your USB ports are locked. You've got the, the protection to detect if that malware has been installed on the machine. And then a spot that really gets overlooked and, and again, is, is coming to light with all these man-in-the-middle attacks is just your basic network security. Um, exactly. You, forget the ATM part. That man in the middle attack is just a physical network attack. So using things like port security, MAC address binding, um, as well as making sure you have TLS 1.2 turned on with your ATM host uh, so that that communication is, in, communication is encrypted in transit. Uh, it, you turning that one feature on TLS 1.2 negates almost all of the man in the middle attacks that we're seeing in the field today, uh, just by turning on TLS 1.2 with your host. And then something that a lot of institutions are starting to do on a semi-regular basis is a, a physical inspection of your ATM. A human Certainly. being walking up to the machine, pulling on the card reader, pulling on the stickers, the Braille sticker, checking the advert light, looking for any signs of physical attack. Because another trend with these, with these frauds is they might try to put a skimmer in on Tuesday and fail then they'll come back with a better skimmer or a different skimmer and do it again on Wednesday. So mm -hmm. if you see the the physical evidence of an attempted install on Tuesday, you can kind of be on high alert uh, for later that evening or the following morning uh, for that next attack. Yeah, I really appreciate that, especially because, you know, a lot of ATMs and point of sale devices will kind of put that in the customer a little bit to be, hey, look out for these things. Well, customer might not know where to look or might not even pay attention. So speaking of kind of those customer style uh, fraud, what are your thoughts of some of the very emerging form of ATM frauds? Like we've heard a little bit about the glue and tap fraud, which I mean, is obviously more as someone stalking someone who's using the ATM. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, absolutely. And, and I kind of put the glue and tap type attacks in more of the social engineering type fraud. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Right? Yeah, you're, you're not attacking your, your ATM device. You're kind of tricking the person using the machine. So glue and tap in particular, um, the bad actor will do something specific to disable the card reader. So I can't put my card into the card reader, mm. uh, which forces you the, to then use the contactless card reader or the tap. And there will be someone there, some someone you know associated with the bad actors, actors coaching people to use that tap function, you know, being very helpful and saying, oh, our card reader's down, you'll have to tap and you can just touch your card right here. And then the customer uses the ATM, does their transaction, and that bad actor will encourage them to go away. Mm -hmm. And and as soon as that person goes away, they forget to log out of their AT, their transaction. So exactly. they're still signed into their account. And then all the bad actor has to do is walk up to the machine, do a withdrawal, take your receipt and walk away. Um, and and these kinds of things, they're a little bit easier to protect against because we're not involving a piece of hardware. But just sure. a couple of settings with your host, like if you're seeing this trend, don't allow transaction chaining. Don't mm -hmm. turn that feature off on your machine. So if I do my withdrawal and my transaction completes, I have to start all over again. A little bit of right. an inconvenience to your customer, but it completely removes the capability for somebody to, to chain on the back end of oh, someone exactly. else's transaction. And kind of along the same same thing with uh, cash harvesting, I forgot to mention earlier, turning off MagStripe fallback. If I'm grabbing MagStripe data from my skimmer and then making a MagStripe card, I come back to try to cash harvest, you don't allow mag strike transact mag stripe transactions it's not going to work 
yeah. it, it won't allow you to do anything outside of the EMV. And those EMV shimmer, skimmer kind of attacks, we don't see those too often in, in the field. It's a much more complicated deep insert skimmer. It's thicker. Uh, so we're seeing those primarily on older style ATMs with the card readers that didn't have the passive um, skimming plates included in them. So not Certainly. as common as the as the regular skimmers. Yeah, those are all really excellent tips. So lastly, I want to ask, what is Cook Solutions Group doing in particular that's unique to combat ATM fraud? Yeah, so the first thing I'll say on that is um, you can tell from Michael's experience and from Michael's passion in this, because he can talk oh, yes, about this for absolutely. hours. You can, you can tell that we've seen this for years and years and years and, and um, experienced it because our customers have experienced it. So I would say the biggest thing is, is, is it is a cat and mouse game. Um, Absolutely. It's always, you know, the, the, the manufacturer or a third party comes up with a preventative tool to stop that certain attack. That's helpful. And then the criminals, they, they come up with something else. Um, and, and we constantly seen that. So since 2008, we developed this solution where we're tying, if I go back to the introduction of cook, where we service 50% of our business is servicing ATMs and ITMs. The other 50% is, is all around the security and the surveillance mm -hmm. and access control and alarm piece. So that's what makes us very, very unique. We, um, this is our own technology on both sides. So we tie that technology together. So we do certain things. And again, since 2018, um, we've continued to recommend these layered security, whether it's third party or manufacturer protection, but we also install certain analytics with our camera system where we're monitoring the ATM, say it's a camera from above. And we also know the real time status and exactly what's happening at the ATM. Mm -hmm. So we can tell, Hey, through our analytics, there's a person that's there, but yet they're not performing transactions or, you know, something doesn't look right. We can immediately take that data. We can send it back to Michael's team or we can send it directly to our customers for somebody to review and respond. Um, and we've seen that so many times. There's so many times that, that, you know, we we've had this software, uh, you know, our, our, our software running and we review video, we get a notification at three o'clock in the morning and there's some person on their knees drilling into the ATM. Our customer would have never known that that's happening. Um, you know, the, unless you had an analytic, like what we have today. So I would say that is what's very unique. Um, and we've, our technology is advanced as it's been around for five or six years, um, that helps protect that. And we've continued to add on to our solutions. So now our team is 24 seven, Michael's team is now 24 mm seven, -hmm. where we're immediately getting notifications and we, we can review that video and, um, you know, even help dispatch police take the ATM out of service, you know, stop these bad guys from doing what they're doing. And we have so many user stories, so many use cases, so many customers that would share, you know, how we helped protect it, how we helped get people arrested. We have videos of police chasing people as they're mm -hmm. installing skimmers on the device because we got the police there in time. So, um, awesome. so, you know, those unique solutions that we have is, is uh, definitely what, you know, something that we have to offer and we can, we can, you know, share more information with customers on that. Excellent. So thank you so much, Levi and Michael. There's some really great information. Really great to have you on. I wanted to remind our listeners about the Bank Customer Experience Summit. It's coming up on September 9th through the 11th in Charlotte, North Carolina. It's co-held with the Interactive Customer Experience Summit. So one badge will gain you entry to both events. So thank you so much, Levi and Michael, for joining us today.